Hi, welcome to our channel True Up. After more than 1,000 days in jail by Canadian authorities, Huawei Company's Chief Financial Officer Meng Wanzhou returned to China on September 24, 2021, after reaching an agreement with the U.S. Justice Department about fraud allegations against her. Notably, contrary to previous assumption, Meng pled not guilty, and the deferred prosecution arrangement included no fine against her. This is a significant win for both Meng and Huawei, since the U.S. side conceded that the legal case against Meng was flawed from the start, possibly due to then-U.S. President Donald Trump's aim to demolish Huawei's leadership position in the global 5G battle. A hearty welcome greeted her in China. Although it has been many months after the news broke, it is still unclear where Meng Wanzhou will go and what she will do following her release from Canada. People are intrigued by her relationship to Huawei, the Chinese tech giant, and in the meantime, she has become a legendary lady who has demonstrated to successfully withstand such torture. So, where has she gone since she was released? What are her and Huawei's next steps? What will she accomplish in the next years? Let's keep watching this video to find out the answers to those questions. Meng was detained in Vancouver in December 2018 after being wanted by U.S. federal prosecutors on fraud accusations linked to suspected Iran sanction breaches. Beijing has branded the former Trump administration's detention a political arrest and has consistently demanded her release. Her court struggle strained ties between China, the U.S., and Canada. Meng was permitted to return home after negotiating an arrangement with the U.S. Department of Justice to postpone her prosecution until late 2022, when her charges might be withdrawn. On Saturday evening, the southern Chinese city of Shenzhen, where the telecommunications giant Huawei is located, threw out the red carpet for Meng, who landed on a Chinese government chartered jet. Meng came from the plane without a face mask waving to a mob of around 100 people waving Chinese flags and yelling welcome home. I'm finally back home. Meng said to those gathered on the tarmac, expressing appreciation to her wonderful homeland. As an ordinary Chinese person who had been trapped overseas for three years, there was never a moment when I did not feel the care and warmth of the party, the homeland, and the people, Meng added. And this is how Meng Wanzhou was apprehended and repatriated to her native China. So, what has this great woman been up to lately? Here's the deal. Huawei had a press conference for its 2021 annual report a few months ago. Meng Wanzhou, Huawei's chief financial officer, entered the stage for the first time in four years to examine Huawei's financial performance in 2021 for the public. This is her first business-related public appearance since coming home. The world has seen a lot of changes in the last four years, and so has China, our country, Meng Wanzhou remarked at the news conference. She stated that she was still trying hard to study and stay up with society's speed. She stated that Huawei is at a difficult era and that its business is decreasing. Meng Wanzhou stated that their scale had shrunk, but their profitability, cash flow acquisition capacity, and overall financial structure robustness and flexibility had all grown, and the company's ability to deal with risks had also improved. In 2021, Huawei's overall operation will be steady, with worldwide sales revenue of 636.8 billion yuan and net profit of 113.7 billion yuan, a 75.9% rise year-on-year. R&D expenditure will reach 142.7 billion yuan in 2021, accounting for 22.4% of yearly revenue, a record high. Every year, Huawei's basic law requires the company to invest more than 10% of its sales income in research and development. Huawei has spent more than 845 billion yuan on research and development over the last 10 years. We insist on investing in R&D with revenue as the foundation, which is a guarantee and cornerstone for us to honestly continue to give the best solution to our clients," Meng Wanzhou said. Meng Wanzhou also highlighted Huawei's long-term investment in R&D, the R&D skills, R&D teams, and R&D platforms. This is the foundation of Huawei's long-term, sustainable competitiveness. 
Huawei's innovation is distinguished by the fact that it invests not only in the now, but also in the future. It is evident that Huawei emphasizes that pre-research expenditures must account for more than 10 to 20 percent of R&D investment, implying that Huawei has around 2 billion to 3 billion US dollars set aside as a strategic expense each year to spend in cutting-edge and basic technological research. Disruptive innovation, even if it turns out to be a total failure, said Huawei founder Ren Zhengfei, is beneficial to our firm because in the course of failure, a huge number of talents have also been fostered. Huawei will employ roughly 107,000 R&D workers worldwide in 2021, accounting for approximately 54.8% of the company's entire workforce, under the approach of emphasizing human capital appreciation above financial capital appreciation. Huawei is ranked 8th on Forbes' list of the 2021 world's best employers. We can see from Meng Wanzhou's experience and words that she can teach us anything. Faced with the supply restrictions, Huawei has concentrated its terminal product improvements on five scenarios, smart office, sports and health, smart home, smart travel, and audiovisual entertainment. With the initial establishment of the Harmony OS ecosystem, an increasing number of consumers have experienced the super-terminal capabilities of multi-terminal and multi-scenario collaboration, and the industry has witnessed the enormous business opportunities and value brought by the intelligent connection of all things. Huawei's smart wearables, smart screens, TWS headsets, and consumer cloud services will rise further in 2021, with revenue from wearable devices and smart displays rising by more than 30% year-on-year. Harmony OS is used by over 220 million Huawei devices, making it the world's fastest-growing mobile terminal operating system. In terms of the Huawei automotive business's quasi-team, Huawei is also completely open to all possibilities and skills. This approach has not altered, with a focus on ICT, becoming a provider of incremental components for intelligent and connected vehicles and assisting car makers in building good automobiles. Huawei is still fighting for life, and there are numerous obstacles to overcome. Huawei will continue to boost investment and strive for basic theory, structure, and innovation as it moves forward in the direction of digitization, intelligence, and low carbonization, depending on the three aspects of talent, scientific research, and innovation. The software's technological foundation is being rebuilt in order to ensure long-term competitiveness. In general, changes in the external environment will not cause Huawei to modify its beliefs and goals. Thanks for watching our video. We would appreciate it if you subscribed our channel and gave us a thumb. See you.